Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin, elhamdülillahi estaimnuhu ve estağfiruhu ve na'udhu billahi min şurur yenfusina ve min seyyiyyati a'malina. Men yehdihillahu fela mudilla leh ve men yüllil fela hediye leh ve la tecidu lehu veliyen murşide. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallahu vahduhu la şerike leh, lehu mulku ve lehu elhamd. Yuhyi ve yümit fi yedihi l-khayr. وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي ساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فقد غوى نسأل الله ربنا أن يجعلنا ممن يطيعه ويطيع رسوله ويتبع رضوانه ويجتنب سخطه فإنه نحن به وله أما بعد فيا عباد الله قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم It is nothing but a reminder to all the worlds to whomever among you wishes to go straight What is this going straight? Going straight is looking to your Lord inwardly and acting with wisdom outwardly. Inwardly, it is bringing oneself to remembrance of our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the creator of actions and events, but he is not associated with actions or events. Outwardly, it is helping the Muslims and all of mankind, and speaking out against and preventing the great crimes, if you can. Between these inward and outward actions lies the prayer. The straight path is neither disobeying someone in authority simply because we disagree with them, nor is it slavishly or fearfully obeying them. Obedience in the world is done if it is an act of wisdom. Disobedience in the world is done if it is an act of wisdom. The straight path is neither pretending there is no cause for concern, nor is it allowing oneself to fall victim to anxiety. I counsel you to avoid heated argument and anxiety. If your opinion differs on the best way to deal with any situation, do not allow it to cause open dispute. It may be that you are damaged by dispute and not by the situation about which you argue. A characteristic of our time is that we are exposed to vast amounts of information which stirs up debate. Muslims, help each other and have concern for each other. Ask your neighbours if they are all right. We are mercifully spared from the anxiety that is the everyday state of many. But the completion of, it, of Ihsan is that we have concern for others, even and especially for frightened people, as our Messenger had concern for them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have sympathy with those to driven to fear or anxiety, since we cannot know the circumstances of others, and they may have legitimate cause for concern, and may be naturally disposed to anxiety, and furthermore, they may be alone. To of the great curses of this age of ours are being alone and being in debt at interest. Being alone allows us to keep company with the shaitan of perpetual thoughts. Being with the Muslims allows us to bathe in the presence of mercy. Being alone allows us to keep company with the shaitan of faraway voices. Being with the Muslims silences the voices of anxiety. Being alone makes us look jealously at the Jamaat and see fault. Being with the Muslims makes us present with what is real. Being alone allows the shadows of terror to loom over us. Being with the Muslims dispels the shadows. Being alone allows us to ossify and become fixed in worldly configurations. Being with the Muslims keeps us in change. Being alone puts us under pressure. Being with the Muslims is a sublime normality. Muslims, institutional debt at interest 
is different from owing money to people you know. Lending money, money to others is permitted, but making it a sadaka is better. This society we are in is increasing its debt exponentially, using money that does not exist. Governments borrow vast amounts, but from whom? They said a hundred years ago that the Titanic was unsinkable, and we now laugh at them for it. But that is the boat we are on today. Muslims, we must tend to our core. We must look after it. What is our core? Our core is certainty. How do we tend to our certainty? We tend to our certainty by putting the prayer first. If you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you first. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ We will test you with a certain amount of fear and a certain amount of hunger and with loss of wealth and life and fruits. But give news, وَبَشِرِ sabirin. But give news to the steadfast. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ those who, when disaster strikes, say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah, and to Him we will return. Ula'ika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah. Those are the people who will have blessings and mercy from their Lord. Wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. They are the ones who are guided. The true disaster is to lose one's certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of affairs and that the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is true in what he says. Allah says, Innahu la kawlu rasulin kareem. Truly, it is the speech of a noble messenger. Bi quwwatin inda lil ashin makin. Possessing great strength, securely placed with the Lord of the Throne, muta'in tamba amin, obeyed there, trustworthy. Wa ma sahibukum bi majnoon. Your companion is not man. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses the Muslims in their moment of uncertainty. Truly, it is the speech of a noble messenger, and your companion is not man. Which is why. We choose to recite what we know of the book and keep company with other people who love to be reminded and we avoid indulging in excessive conversation about anything that makes us forget this reality and we close the door on voices that confuse and obscure it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillahi Lali Hadana Li Hada, Wa Ma Kuna Li Nahtadiya Lala An Hadana Allah, Laqad Jaat Rasul Rabbina Bil Haq, Ashadu An La Ilahi Na Allah, Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadu Rasulullah, Wa La Hawla Wa La Quwata Ila Billahi Al Ali Al Aleem. To give ourselves some perspective, let us remind ourselves of part of the story of Sayyidina Yusuf Alayhi Salam. I will read only the translation. Allah says, the translation of which is, When Yusuf told his father, Father, I saw eleven bright stars, and the sun and moon as well. I saw them all prostrate in front of me. He said, My son, don't tell your brothers of your dream, lest they devise some scheme to injure you. Shaitan is a clear-cut enemy to man. Accordingly, your Lord will pick you out, and teach you the true meaning of events, and perfectly fulfill his blessings on you, as well as on the family of Yaqub, as he fulfilled it perfectly before upon your forebears, Ibrahim and Ishaq. Most certainly your Lord is knowing and wise. 
In Yusuf and his brothers there are signs for every one of those who wants to ask. When they declared, Yusuf and his brother are dearer to our father than we are, even though we constitute a powerful group, our father is clearly making a mistake. Kill Yusuf or expel him to some land so that your father will look to you alone. And then you can be people who do right. One of them said, do not take Yusuf's life but throw him to the bottom of a well so that some travellers may discover him if that is something you have to do. They said, Our father, what is wrong with you that you refuse to trust with Yusuf, trust us with Yusuf, when in truth we only wish him well? Why don't you send him out with us tomorrow so he can enjoy himself and play about? All of us will make sure that he is safe. He said, It grieves me to let him go out with you I fear a wolf might come and eat him up, while you are heedless and not attending to him. They said, if a wolf does come and eat him up, when together we make a powerful group, in that case we will truly be in loss. But when in fact they did go out with him, and gathered all around and agreed to put him at the bottom of the well, we then revealed to him, to Yusuf, salam, you will inform them of this deed they perpetrate at a time when they are totally unaware. That night they came back to their father in tears, saying, Father, we went out on, to run a race and left Yusuf together with our things, and then a wolf appeared and ate him up. But you are never going to believe us now, even though we are telling the truth. Then they produced his shirt with false blood on it. He said, the father said, It is merely that your lower selves have suggested something which you did. But... Beauty lies in showing steadfastness. It is Allah alone who is my help in the face of the event that you describe. Some travellers came that way and then dispatched their water drawer to let his bucket down. He said, good news for me, I found a boy. Then they hid him away among their goods. Allah knew very well what they were doing. They sold him for a pittance, a, smooth, a few small coins, considering him to be of little worth. The Egyptian who had brought him told his wife, Look after him with honour and respect. It's possible he will be of use to us, or perhaps we might adopt him as a son. And thus we established Yusuf in the land to teach him the true meaning of affairs. Allah is in control of his affair. However, most of mankind do not know. And when he became a full-grown man, we gave him knowledge and right judgment too. That is how we reward all doers of good. In, this, in the story, years then pass, and many extraordinary events before Yusuf, he is wrongly imprisoned, then released, and becomes the king's great advisor, saving the kingdom by his correct reading of signs. Meanwhile, his father has turned blind out of grief for losing him. Eventually, the brothers are brought into Yusuf's presence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, says, So when they came into his presence, they said, Your eminence talking to Yusuf, hardship has hit us and our families. We bring scant merchandise, but fill the measure for us generously. Allah always rewards the generous giver. He said, are you aware of what you did to Yusuf and his brother in ignorance? They said, are you Yusuf? He said, I am indeed Yusuf, and this here is my brother. Allah has acted graciously to us. As for those who fear Allah and are steadfast, Allah does not allow to go to waste the wage of any people who do good. They said, by Allah, Allah has favoured you above us. Clearly we, we were in the wrong. He said, no blame at all will fall upon you. Today you have forgiveness from Allah. He is the most merciful of the merciful. Go with this shirt of mine and cast it on my father's face and he will see again. Then come to me with your families. And when the caravan went on its way, their father said, I can smell Yusuf's scent. You probably think I have become senile. They said, by Allah, your mind is still astray. But when the bringer of good news came, he cast it on his face and his sight returned. He said, did I not say to you before, I know things from Allah that you do not know. They said, our father, may we be forgiven for all the wrong things we have done. We were indeed greatly mistaken men. He said, I will ask my Lord to pardon you. 
He is ever forgiving, most merciful. And when they entered into Yusuf's presence, he drew his parents close to him and said, Enter Egypt, safe and sound, if Allah wills. He raised his parents up to the throne. Others, the others, fell prostrate in front of him. And he said, My father, truly this is now the interpretation of the dream I had. My Lord has made it all come true. And he was kind to me by letting me out of prison and brought you from the desert when Shaitan had caused dissent between me and my brothers. My Lord is kind to anyone he wills. He is indeed all-knowing, all-wise. My Lord, you have granted power to me on earth and taught me the true meaning of events. Originator of the heavens and earth, you are my friend in this world and the next. So take me as a Muslim at my death and join me to the people who are Salihun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us to the people who are Salihun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe in that safe knowledge which does not deviate. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين عدد ما في عدد ما في إن الله صلاة دائمة في دوام ملك الله اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر الكفر والكافرين وانصر المجاهدين في سبيل الله واجعل كلمتك هي العليا وكلمة الكفر هي سفلى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا يا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فقوموا فقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله